Hello everyone, this is Dawn here with um, a message to share with you um, about the week ahead, actually the last two weeks of April, or are we, are we two weeks? I think there's two more weeks in April, but in any case, um, yeah, I'm just going to share from my heart here and see what comes through. Uh, the first thing that um, I'm really feeling very strongly is that there is the, the, the wave, the wave is upon us now. Um, and what many um, may have seen as the crest of the wave, that uh, the, the wave upon wave that have come in the last maybe couple of years um, was, was merely the precursor um, of the wave that is now truly upon us this spring as we move into late April and May. So um, I'm seeing this as, uh, I keep uh, hearing the echo of the words, the grand reversal. And, but what my message is for us all is that our opportunity, whatever the height of the wave or the depth of the wave or <laughs> the breadth of the wave, is our opportunity is to find the courage to lead with love and to bring um, or to be a voice of calm through the chaos. Maybe not even a voice, um, but a presence of calm through the chaos. So once again, I, uh, I've, several, I've had several dreams. Um, real quick, some of the images. I keep getting, getting the number 474, which I um, don't know for sure. It could have to do with um, April 25th, 2020, which is a four. Um, I have some other ideas, but I think I'll leave it at that. Keep getting that number. Keep getting uh, this image of a wave and keep getting the, um, this has been actually recurring throughout the last six months, the um, the symbol that I uh, painted, the quick painting, I think I've shared it here before, of the um, the rainbow spirit that's like gathering everything up from the earth, and it's almost like a, a great flood um, kind of scene, and I'll put that as the cover of this, of this uh, video. So um, to me, that was always a symbol of hope, great hope, and of restoration. So um, sometimes I'm only getting, giving given sometime I'm having the hardest time can can I just say I'm so frustrated because the last month I've been having the hardest time speaking like it's like there's a disconnect between like getting the words out uh, which is is uh it's been a really a challenge I have a feeling I know what that's about too um but alas I would go off on a tangent should I go in that direction so just uh, bear with me as I'm speaking <laughs> I'll do the best I can so so anyway the idea of a grand reversal 474 idea of a great wave great hope also restoration uh, that chaos imagery um, has come through a few times and the um, the idea of the lights going off and coming back on again perhaps not literal um, but perhaps more um, metaphorically um, in terms of humanity itself and then at the same time I've been sharing um, so I, I finished a series um, on the 12 diamond dimensions and uh, the soul of society passage to a new society and um, and then was led to back to the book I wrote, wrote in uh, 2015 and released January 15th of that year um, which is called All Systems Go, and it's about 24 life or solar systems, their connection points and momentum action pathways. And um, several times I've been shown um, this um, intricate kind of weaving together um, of this inner network, for lack of a, another description of it, and the contrast of that as the matrix of soul within us and the matrix of soul between us, the contrast of that with the webs of deceit and disillusionment that I've talked about in the past. Go back, I think it's two or three years ago, if that video is still here, I don't know. Um, speaking of which, uh, there's a good likelihood at some point that I will mix things up and um, take down some of my older um, videos. Um, I'll leave all the creative stuff, I think. Um, so. The, you know, but I may take down some of the earlier videos um, and more on that in a separate video because I'm being called to um, speak about a different, um, yeah, I'll, I'm going to address that in a separate video. <laughs> Sorry, too much. Okay, so, um, and by the way, I just, I would love to, 
you know, be in a, in a greater flow, um, but doing the best I can given the current circumstances, um, just in my, in my own, um, moving through this time and in, uh, the volume of things that are flowing through me and directed at me, uh, can be a little much at times. So, yeah. Okay, so um, I want to talk about a couple of things. I'm giving, I was given a specific passage to read to you from the Bible, which I will do in just a few minutes. Um, I want to touch on something that I did not come through in an earlier video because I think, I can't remember if the video itself got corrupted, which is interesting uh, now that I'm thinking about it, if so. But something happened with that video and I couldn't share it or I was, I don't know if I was maybe told not to, but it was maybe two or three weeks ago. And it was a sharing, I had shared some of the places that I was led, um, that I um, was led to stay in the last six months, you know, because I've I've been, you know, technically homeless and but had places lined up to stay, and it was very interesting the timing of where I was and when I was where I was, and the connecting points to various um, events um, and un unfoldings and things that were. Um, are, con are now common knowledge to all and things that have yet to be revealed but have happened um, and and some of them some of them really beautiful um, but um, yes I think they do have to do with the restoration of humanity and they do have to do with purity and innocence and the return of that and God's absolute um, and definitive um, love poured out on those who have been uh, damaged by these webs of deceit and disillusionment, which doesn't have to do with just one issue, by the way. I do. I get quite emotional about the one issue that you guys know, um, but it's much more than that. Much more. It's, and again, that intricacy. So that contrast of the inner matrix of soul and this matrix of soul that is is the true web of humanity and that is one with um, the divine, in, uh, I don't want to say the word intelligence, but the divine um, presence in, infused in all of life, the light and the life and the love that we are, the one light, the one life, the one love, that that matrix of soul, it's like, in, in what I was shown over and over again in these dreams and, and visions and just waking moments, like there, this, the contrast could not have been more clear. Like imagine the murkiest, milkiest water, like contamination um, versus something like crystalline that's like sparkling and, and like literally you can feel it vibrating because it is so beautiful and so, so um, stunning and has maintained the purity um, and the of, of the life that is at the at the core and so now is a time for each of us to um, hold fast to that and to know that that is who we are because people are going to need for us to model that and to buy our choice in how to be um, they that's how those who who are able to see out or just to, to see their way that's how how they will see their way, uh, many of them. Um, so lots of great things um, happening um, as well, though, in terms of um, people's awareness of uh, at least some facets of the, the illusion that has been at, at play and perhaps they're playing into that. Um, and and let's, it, it's important to remember, however, though I am separating out those contrasting visions and or realities, it's important to remember that it's all a play of light. It's all a beautiful play of light. And ultimately, all will serve that the, um, the light and uh, all all that rises must converge. So ultimately there will be a coming together, a restoration, a unity, um, and the two things that seemed so irreconcilable will be held as one in a larger field of grace and love. So these waves uh, are something I've been seeing, um, metaphorical, perhaps literal, um, earth shaking, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a lot of that. Um, and some of what I was guided to share in this video, just a second. 
is to talk about, <clears throat> first let me talk about a definition. Um, I looked it up <laughs> because, you know, I was thinking about corruption and, and how uh, the, the vision, everything was corrupted in these various visions and there were a couple other dreams I had where it was clear there was a, a corruption that was from the inside out and it had literally infiltrated every corner, everything. Um, and we know that, um, you know, this has been true in, um, in our society and that's why we're at this stage um, as one people, as humanity and why uh, we're, we must wake up because we can't breathe like this, we can't survive like this and we're meant to thrive, we're meant to live, we're meant to have life and have it to the full. So the corruption, what is the root of corruption? You know, what's the true meaning of corruption? Well, my definition is just that, like it's always, it's sowing the seed of division. And so, but I looked it up because um, I thought, you know, let's make sure that, I, and, and sure enough, there was a deeper um, a, a nuance that uh, I think is important. So corruption comes from the Latin root corrompere, which means to mar, bribe, or destroy. And it came into use, this word, in the 14th century. And it was used to mean uh, debased in character. It's assimilated from um, the um, the uh, what is it called the prefix the prefix com, um, and then rup, which is the past particle of rumpere or to break, to break. Um, and then that's also from okay. I don't need to say that. However, the source um, of this idea of to break is also from the Sanskrit rupya, to suffer from a stomach ache, and, uh, or Old English for to break or tear. Now this is quite interesting if you really reflect on that, you know, what's our, our stomach, our gut, right? Our gut knowing. What does your gut say about what's going on? And many of us, like our stomachs were turn, <laughs> turning a long time ago, but Right now, I'm pretty sure that um, more and more people, this is true, and I believe that you know, in these these next couple of weeks, will uh, unfortunately result in m more of that. And so, um, the uneasiness, the dis-ease in our stomachs, where we digest because we can't digest this anymore. You know, I've been saying this about media for a, a, a while. Actually, I'm making this video. I'm, I couldn't watch this movie in the other room. It's like a, not a bad movie. Like in, it's a great movie, but it's uh, it's like I can just the agenda is so clear. And then you know, I guess it was maybe it started about ten years ago for me. And I remember uh, I had just I'd gone back to church for a few times, um, and with uh, my former husband and my son, I really wanted to do what I had to to um, to do that for him for my son and. Um, I, I'll never forget how jarring it was, um, because all of these individuals who I, I believe they, their faith was real, you know, but they, it's like they it would be, you know, speaking about one thing, or maybe there was a, a class on, on some passage of the Bible, and then literally in the hall, like five minutes later, they were talking about a scene in the latest, um, TV drama on, I don't know, what was it before Netflix, whatever we were watching back then. <laughs> I can't remember, maybe it was a reality TV or something, but, um, but I mean, and I was always like stunned, not that they were watching that, it's just that there was no, it was all, like, it was all, it was just jarring to me, the reality was so, uh, and I am, I am not, um, by any, um, definition, I don't think, and in terms of my openness to those those kinds of things, I'm not closed off to, you know, watching a great movie and or experiencing a certain aspect of life. Um, but to me, it was anti-life, the particular things that were being talked about. It wasn't, and it, again, it wasn't a matter of shame or like, oh, sex scenes or anything like that. It was just the, the something wasn't right. These two things do not belong together. And if, if they are, then let's have a bigger, it was like a, a buying of the, a false story, and then a separation of the, the story as if it didn't matter, and that only, as we know, got deeper, 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 to the point that, you know, then along came uh, uh, Netflix and all of the um, other streaming services, and then 
um, I was not aware for a long time of, you know, some of the, the things that were um, being consumed by the masses. Um, and it's like a brainwashing, like a, and so all of that has been at play. Um, in the earlier video, I talked a little bit about some of the specifics that I'm not feeling drawn to talk about here, but be sure that you are aware of some of the, you know, um, proven out there in the open things that have been going on, um, you know, by our government. Um, you know, I, I remember studying years ago for, I think it was in 1994 when I was, uh, I uh, took a test to become an accredited public relations practitioner. And um, at that time, I remember thinking, hmm, this is interesting because I was studying for the test. And there was one part of it that was just about techniques and how you separate out, you know, ethical um, communications tactics versus unethical. And I, I remember, you know, revisiting this idea of propaganda, which, of course, I learned in, in college years earlier, I'm dating myself here, but yeah, college 10 years before that. And so um, and, and and I remember thinking, wow, it's like the, the government itself had moved more in this direction. And at that time, I was still fairly, um, fairly unaware of the depth of that, of that corruption or deceit and how deep it ran and how um, mm, how much it had um, hoodwinked um, so many people but this um, the, the entertainment industry I, I spoke some about this in this video I didn't share like the, it's it's um, the the depth of the of the propaganda is like so um, it just like makes your stomach turn. And so it was interesting to me to hear that, like that's a that's what the Sanskrit root means to suffer from a stomach ache um, because of a break, a tear. It's a tear in the fabric of integrity. It is, it is a, literally a, um, a divide. It is a tear, a ripping open, a taking away of freedom, of wholeness, of truth. And so the actual meaning uh, in the dictionary of corruption, number one, is dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power. So corruption is the opposite of truth because it's dishonest and it's fraudulent. Corruption is fraudulent um, and it's uh, typically associated with those in power. And then uh, and so it enslaves. Right. That's what it does. It takes freedom. It it slashes literally wholeness um, it tells us whether overtly or in more subtle ways that we are not whole that we are not sovereign that we are not uh, it instructs and it and it gnaws and it eats away so it's the true definition of corruption number one dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power and number two the process by which something, typically a word or expression, is changed from its original use or meaning to one that is regarded as erroneous, erroneous or debased. Did you hear that? Of process. Over time. It happens over time. Corruption. It's a deterioration and decay from the inside out. And it often goes unnoticed. And it turns everything on its head, and, and that happens through this slow seeping away or gnawing away of what of energy. It's stealing energy. Now, sometimes we are willing participants in this. I think that's what we'll all have to look at here when this wave hits, and or you know, to whatever degree when we come to the realization or the awarenesses. And I believe that there will be um, this. You know, it'll be a confusing time, and so. So I wanted to start there just to say that this, um, this meaning of, of corruption itself and, uh, is, is important, I think, and, and this idea that it's a process, it's dishonest, it's fraudulent, and it, it, it happens over time and it happens typically from inside. A system and, and so to me it relates very much to my um, calling at the moment or what I just wrapped up was this laying out of the um, a path to a potential uh, patterns of potential and a path to systems and um, 
and organizations and structures that are dynamic and sustainable. And that begins with you and I understanding that I am and you are a dynamic and sustainable system, coordinated power harnessed from within, from within. And that's how this happens. The flourishing of humanity happens from the inside out, just as the decay and the deterioration and the corruption has been allowed to happen from the inside out. And we've been blinded by our, we were bought, we were bought quite easily we collectively, most most of us, to some degree or another. Um, and I've always said that, I didn't say this for many years, actually, because it, it felt like everything was taken from me and I was just like, you know, spinning around, like not even tethered to this earth anymore for so long. And so much was lost because of it in this life and it's reminiscent, a replay of, of, a, of a, other memories that I have. But actually, in a way, it helped me to see more clearly and to know, and uh, I'll leave it at that. So, um, so this idea of corruption, it's important to really look at this and not shy away from it, not just move too quickly past it, but we've got to understand because we cannot allow this cycle. It has been a repetitive cycle in the history of humanity, and we have got to um, elevate out of that cycle completely and and so let me get back to the wave um, first I'm going to share the passages given to share let me pull that up it's Isaiah of course <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I'm always given Isaiah um, so it's Isaiah 43 I'll just read the whole thing but now this is what the Lord says he who created you Jacob he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom. Cush and Seba in your stead, since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble, which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things. Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right so that others may hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from the ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians and the ships in which they took such great pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, 
that they may proclaim my praise. Yet you have not called on me, Jacob. You have not wearied yourself for me, Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with grain offerings, nor wearied you with demands for incense. You have not brought bought any fragment calamus. I'm sorry, you have not bought any fragrant calamus for me, or lavished on me the fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your offenses. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. Your first father sinned, those I sent to teach you rebelled against me, so I disgraced the dignitaries of your temple. I consigned Jacob to destruction and Israel to scorn. So there's so much in this passage, which I think I have shared before here, but I'll just leave it without much comment. Um, I also have been, there's several passages from the New Testament that have been, you know, kind of floating around discerned yet if these are um, for everyone but I'll just touch quickly on a couple of those um, one is starting in like um, the end of Galatians the book of Galatians and um, there's a passage where hold on just a sec there's a passage where it's talking about carrying each other's burdens and in this way we fulfill the law of Christ if anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions and take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word shall share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time, we will, re we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. And then as you, uh, after Galatians is the book of Ephesians. Um, and... In chapter 2, Paul writes that for he himself, Jesus, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizen, fellow citizens with God's people and members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. I'm seeing very much um, in, if you watch my video series on my main channel, um, I talked about the, um, the temple in the center of the star of wonder that comes from afar and these five wheels in a wheel that uh, emerge from the star of wonder and that will be perpetually spinning from here forward through all time and space and those wheels um, are the um, allow and create freedom um, they, they, they create patterns of potential for freedom and truth and peace ultimately and the creation of new systems and structures to support us in this new era rich in love and this this is so beautiful isn't it you know that there are no foreigners and strangers but we are fellow citizens with God's people and members of his household built on the foundation 
and with Jesus as the chief cornerstone, and in him all is joined together and rises to become a holy temple. In him we are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So this idea of yourself as a sacred temple, as the dwelling place. Uh, I touched on this in some other videos, uh, which I don't, again, I don't know if they're still up, but um, is an important one. And it's one I keep being shown in a variety of ways. Um, even like when I'm in nature, which isn't very often because of where I am, it's like I'm in a parking lot, but there's even there, there are signs of nature. You know, like there's um, there's the little bird building its, or the little baby bird building, rebuilding the nest where it got blown away by the storm. And, and everywhere there's mirrored this idea of the dwelling place and the temple. Um, and even in this room that I am, you know, that is my home at the moment, um, there is, um, there is, you know, a rem it's reminiscent of this idea and, and what we're invited to do right now in the midst of the revelation of all that has been uh, pushed down and pushed down and pushed down until our stomach is so upset that we literally can't hold it in anymore. Those of us who, you know, you know who... Um, many of us who have been awake to this have purged um, through the years and that is the service that is our service to humanity um, and so nothing was wasted or nothing lost no matter where you are on on your particular uh, journey with regard to um, the path of sacred partnership you know or the um, your calling in, in your um, role in terms of one who is here to bear light and to bring um, to bring peace ultimately but as Jesus said um, uh, sometimes that's about bringing a sword too so um, I just want to close with one more passage here well first let me circle back to the main idea I'm sorry I'm a little scattered <laughs> the main idea is that there's a wave upon us and I am thinking late April here early May it's gonna be uh, the crashing of those waves, whether that's publicly known or not, I don't know. I, I don't have any idea um, yet. What I do know is it is a grand reversal and that many of us will be called to find the courage to tap the courage to lead in love um, and to bear the light of Christ and to be the calm in the midst of chaotic circumstances. Um, and to raise high the banner of love and to carry hope in our hearts and to, you know, to return to the seven wonders of the soul, faith, hope, love, healing, growth, passion, beauty, and to be, uh, allow those to shine through us in that spectrum, that full spectrum. And um, so the wave, um, the reverse, grand reversal, the courage to lead, calm through the chaos. Uh, remember that Sanskrit root, you know, like, anything that makes you feel sick to your stomach to your stomach you know anybody who's listening who doesn't i'm pretty sure everybody listening to this knows this but you know like pay attention to that pay attention to it whatever it is even if it seems innocuous uh even if you don't know why you're having that reaction um well yeah <laughs> um i in in addition to looking at the idea of corruption i was looking at um deception and the topic of deception and I found excuse me um, I found that there are five types of deception typically and I just this was just from Google so this is not this is not necessarily um, the end all of this discussion but I just I wanted to touch on those because it was interesting to me and I think it's going to be important for us to understand deception is not just about a lie that is told that's part that's one way that deception occurs and so this was a helpful reminder to me so I did want to share it um, five types of deception lies equivocation concealment concealment of the truth not necessarily even when you're not lying so lies, equivocation, concealments, exaggerations, and understatements. So again, that polarization, right? Um, and an exaggeration of uh, basically telling a, a story or changing the facts or, you know, morphing it to what you want people to believe and putting that up there. So generally so that you don't have to admit that you're lying to yourself. And I'm not just talking about media, but that is one way that that happens. But also, it happens. Uh, it's, we've learned. We've, this is the true um, 
this will be really, I think, an opportunity for us to see just how deep the and subtle some of the conditioning has been. And when we didn't even know that the wool was being pulled over our eyes and not just by government, media or huge giant systems, but also in every everyday life and in circumstances that one would not necessarily expect. So um, it's important to look at deception and corruption, um, but ultimately to turn our eyes. Uh, one of my favorite songs when I was uh, very young was Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, because for me it reminded me of the Jesus that I knew, who was not the Jesus that they had the little pasty picture of on the church walls, because he was never smiling and laughing, and Jesus smiled and laughed a lot. Um, a lot and that can get us through sometimes but um but you know yeah, turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace i'm gonna finish up let me scroll down here i was trying to find one thing here back to Paul's writings in the book of Ephesians. After, so after that part where we were talking about the cornerstone and then um, how Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, um, the pro so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, this idea of the fullness of Christ. And then it, it talks about, then we're not going to be like little children, infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. scheming. And that deceitful scheming has been everywhere in every emanation of um you know the polar opposites in various ways that that occurs in our reality so that so the idea is that christ gave he equipped so that we might build up the body of christ until we all reach unity in the faith and become mature and then we're not blown about by these and we're not fooled you know, and then instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. For of this you can be sure, I'm skipping ahead now to chapter 5 of Ephesians, for of this you can be sure. And it talks about... Um, no immoral or impure or greedy person or idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. And it talks about having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather exposing them. It is uh, uh, it, it's shameful to mention even what the disobedient do in secret, yet everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So... I hope that something here has been helpful and I just um, know that we're really called in this time as much as we can and each of us has facing our own you know unique challenges in this regard but to find the courage to lead and love and to be the calm in the midst of chaos. Lots of love. See you later.